the objective of this present today's class is to understand in the relations between the structure of a material and to the properties of the materials. And when we talk of the structure, there are different levels of structure, the electronic structure, the atomic structure, the uh, crystal structure and the microstructure. So today we will try to understand what are the various crystal structures in the material and how do we derive them and how they are correlated to the mechanical properties, particularly as a metallurgist we are more bothered about the mechanical properties of materials. So, how mechanical properties are related to the structure of the material. So, if you want to talk about the structure of the material, uh, the first thing that comes to our mind is uh, uh, long back the plateau. Okay, I do not know whether you have heard of any time platonic solids. Have you heard of platonic solids? Okay. You have heard of plateau, uh, the, the most famous student of Socrates. Okay in uh, 400 BC, okay, that was the period when he was born. Okay. So, that is the time itself, he thought the whole universe is made up of five solids. Okay. He thought that the whole universe can be thought of arrangement of periodic arrangement of five solids, though ultimately people have proved that that is not really true. Uh, but those five solids are called the platonic solids, which are the only five regular solids that are available. Okay. So, what are these solids? The first solid is what is called a tetrahedron. You know what a tetrahedron is? Okay. What is a tetrahedron? No, not tetragonal crystal system. So, tetrahedron is a solid, okay. tetrahedron is a solid made up of tri any solid for example, okay, has some faces. Well, for example, cube you all know, okay. cube has how many faces? Six faces. What are these faces? Squares, is not it? Okay. So, it is a, a solid made up of six square sides. Okay. So, similarly, a tetrahedron is a solid made up of triangles. Okay. It has four triangles. So, if you imagine a triangle as a base okay, and put a, uh, uh, a point on top, a vertex and then add, join all the all the of three sides uh, with that vertex, you get basically a tetrahedron. So, that means it has a base triangular base and an apex on top and the three points corners of the triangle are joined to the apex. So, ultimately what you end up is the three triangles and a triangular base. So, basically it has four triangles okay. and this is a regular solid means say have you heard of what are regular solids? What are regular polygons? Is equal. Okay. Uh, there are number of polygons starting from a triangle. Okay. So, for example, if you want to have a polygon, minimum you need to have three sides. If you have only two sides, it cannot become a polygon, is not it? You should have at least three sides okay. and the lowest polygon is basically a triangle. But all triangles are not regular triangles. There is only one triangle which is a regular triangle. That is, what is it? It is an equilateral triangle. We all know that. Okay. So, the next uh, polygon is uh, basically, if it is a regular polygon, it is a square. Okay. So, you can also have a rectangle which is also a four sided polygon, but it is not a regular polygon. Okay. So, that is a square. Then you can have a regular pentagon, you can have a regular hexagon and a septagon, octagon and, th and so on. And if you can make a solid which is made up of regular polygons, we call it as a regular solid. Okay. So, a uh, cube is a regular solid made up of squares, because square is a regular polygon containing four sides. So, we can call a cube as a, a regular solid and in principle actually a crystallographer would like to call that uh, not as a cube, but as a hexahedron. Why we call it hexahedron? Because it has it has six sides. Tetrahedron is we call it tetrahedron because it has four sides, tetra is four. 
Okay. So, that is a tetrahedron, then you have a hexahedron and you have a octahedron, hexahedron is uh, the second solid, third solid is octahedron, then we have another solid called dodecahedron. and finally, icosahedron. What is a dodecahedron? It is not 10, dodeca, okay. it is 12 okay. and icosa, anybody knows? It is a very crucial solid, uh, a crucial structure which is uh, very commonly found in one type of materials. Have you heard of quasi crystals? So, quasi crystals are usually made up of structure which is icosahedral arrangement of atoms. If you think of a solid, for example, uh, a cubic crystal structure we say, a cubic crystal structure how do we uh, visualize it? We visualize it having atoms at each corner, is not it? So, that is a cubic structure. Huh? we have face centered cubics, body centered cubic, we will come to them a little later. So, but is a cubic structure basically we imagine as if there are atoms at the individual corners. Okay. So, similarly an icosahedron structure is also the same that you have an icosahedron with 20 faces, icosa is 20. Okay. You have 20 faces which are triangles and these 20 triangles will make up a, uh, a icosahedron with atoms at each corner and then dodecahedron is a uh, solid which is made up of pentagons. For example, in, uh, icosahedron is also very crucial in uh, buckyballs, have you heard of buckyballs? <coughs> Carbon buckyballs, no? Buckminster fullerenes, you have heard of fullerenes? Okay, at least material scientists know about it. Okay, is a real uh, uh, fascinating subject. Lot of people are working on them, and an offshoot of that is the nanotubes. Nowadays, people talk about carbon nanotubes. Okay, so Buckminster Fullerenes uh, is nothing but uh, a carbon molecule containing 60 atoms. C60 people call it. C60 and the 60 atoms are organized in such a way that they have this icosahedral structure. Okay. So, the atoms are arranged uh, in such a fashion that they have the icosahedral atomic packing and that is supposed to be the closest packing feasible so far. Okay. So, if you want to have, we, uh, we say in a uh, cubic structure, the close pack cubic structure is what is it? FCC, what is the packing density feasible there? How much packing density you get? 74 percent. Okay. So, icosahedron can give you much more than that. Okay. So, that is why icosahedral packing is the best packing as far as packing is concerned, but the only problem is okay, a cube, you imagine it as a, as a brick. If you translate that brick in three dimensions, you can build up a structure. You think of a wall, how do we make wall? Okay. We take a uh, brick and translate that brick in two dimensions, okay. that is a wall. Okay. If you do it in three dimensions, you can get a structure, huh? a crystal structure, but unfortunately, if you try to take an icosahedron okay, and uh, try to translate it in three dimensions, you cannot have a continuous structure without any voids left out. Okay. An icosahedron, if you try to translate, you will always have because two icosahedra, if you put them together, okay, there will be some voids left out, and those voids are in crystallography we call them as frustration. Okay. So, that means you will have a solid with a lot of porosity, if you imagine that way, okay. and such a uh, material with a lot of porosity cannot be really thought of. So, long back people thought that it is not possible to have solids with icosahedral packing. We will talk about it a little later and to see how this is feasible in quasi crystals, because quasi crystals in 1984 people have discovered and since then <coughs> a number of systems okay, 
starting from aluminum manganese uh, alloy uh, to a number of alloys such as aluminum copper vanadium and uh, aluminum copper iron there are so many alloys available now where even if you just take the liquid and solidify it under slow cooling conditions you can get what are called stable quasi crystals okay so we'll talk about them a little later when we come to quasi crystals so basically these are the five regular solids why these are the only five is there any way to prove it in 400 bc itself okay plato has shown that it is impossible to have any solid any regular solid which is outside this gambit of these five how do we say that yes there are only five how do we define a solid can you uh, have you ever thought about how we define a solid so fine anything more than that geometrically how do you prove uh, how do you define a solid geometrically no no we are not talking of any atoms here it's just a solid for example you take a cube okay unfortunately i didn't bring any uh, model here okay so maybe next class i would bring a model for icosahedra and i have a few models uh, and uh, if we look at uh, a cube and carefully look at it okay if i somebody has to define a cube okay you say a equal to b equal to c that's how you define it huh? but uh, what is the uh, best way to define any solid it has a definite shape definite shape and uh, uh, what should be the angular relation any solid what is the definition uh, difference between a plane and a solid you see this table top it's a plane we don't call it as a solid do we call it as a solid no this book which you have in front of you is a plane it's not a solid so also it has third dimension correct. correct so so if you take any apex any any corner of the uh, body okay if the total angle is less than 360 degrees we call it as a solid take any corner for example take square okay join four squares let's say simply like this okay take a square and put another square another square another square okay see there are four squares and what are the uh, what is the angle at any corner of a square 90 degrees okay so you take these four squares and what do you get you get 360 and so if you take four squares and put them together what you get is you get a plane you cannot get a solid but the beauty of a cube is that in a cube at any corner how many squares are meeting 3 the moment four squares meet at a corner at any point it cannot become a a solid it has to become only a plane for example plane tilings okay we see in our uh, houses tilings okay so if you take square tilings you put four tilings it becomes a nice uh, tile without any frustration without any voids left out okay you people have, have even thought about uh, pentagonal tilings have you ever seen uh, taj mahal okay if you see the walls of the taj mahal okay in mogal uh, period Uh, for some reason they like pentagon so much that if you carefully go and uh, observe the walls of the uh, taj mahal you will see all pentagonal tiles the only problem with pentagonal tile is, is if you take one pentagon a regular pentagon for example okay and add another pentagon to it okay huh? so if you keep on uh, if you want to add pentagons of the same size Uh, you will always end up in some voids like this okay if you continue like that uh, so that's one of the problems with pentagon so but that gives you very nice patterns which one of the mathematician by name penrose uh, worked on it what are called penrose tilings okay 
there is a lot of work. Uh, in fact, there is a book called uh, uh, Penrose Tilings, you should look, have a look at it and this is all about pentagonal tiles, okay? how to have nice tiles with pentagonal. Anyway, let us not bother about it at the moment. So, our mm, job is to understand these five regular solids. So, the, so, the definition of a solid is that at the corner, the angle should be less than 360 degrees. Okay? And so, if you try to have a look at uh, what are the feasibilities of uh, such a thing, first let us take a triangle. Triangle, how many sides it has? Okay? It has three sides, is not it? And try to bring three triangles at a corner. If you bring three triangles at a corner, three regular triangles at a corner, what should be the total angle? If you bring three triangles at a corner, what will be the total angle? 180 degrees, yes. So, 180 degrees is less than 360, so it is feasible. And what is such a uh, solid where three triangles meet at a corner? Tetrahedron. So, that is tetrahedron we got it. Okay? Imagine now four triangles meeting at a corner. Imagine four triangles meeting at a corner. Have you ever thought of any solid where four triangles can meet at a corner and what would be the angle if four triangles meet at a corner? If they, what would be the total internal angle if four triangles are meeting at a corner? 2 into, uh, I mean 4 into 60, so 240. So, and what would be such a uh, solid? Can you imagine? Sir, you know it. Sir, octahedron. octahedron, correct. For example, in, uh, in cube, we all talk about tetrahedral voids and octah octahedral voids. How, how do you imagine an octahedron? Okay. Think of, for example, in a cube, if you want to see an octahedron, particularly we talk about octahedral voids okay. <coughs> the, in FCC, the body center is an octahedral void, we say. Okay. Take all the four face centered positions, join them and then take the top face centered position, join it with this and take the bottom body center um, uh, face center position join it what you end up is an octahedron okay basically it's like with a point on top this is this is half of the octahedron Re, uh, other half will be at the bottom okay so what you see is basically at this corner or at any other corner if you see basically a four triangles meeting each other and that's a octahedron huh? And if you think of five meeting, what would it be? What will be the angle? 300 and, and that is an icosahedron. Okay? So, if you take any icosahedron, basically there will be five triangles meeting at each corner. Okay? And <laughs> if you have six triangles meeting, what would happen? What would be the angle? 360. And what would be such a solid? It is a, it's not a solid. You imagine a six equilateral triangle meeting at a point, what would it become? It would be like a hexagon. Imagine a hexagon, regular hexagon. Regular hexagon is nothing but a six triangles, equilateral triangles meeting at a point that is a regular hexagon. So, this is like a triangular tiles or hexangl, uh, hexagonal tiles. Okay? One can think of a hexagonal tiles like that or, uh, or triangular equilateral triangular tiles like that. We rarely see triangular tiles basically because one has to uh, make uh, such tiles which is uh, which a large number of tiles you need okay? instead of having a square tiles. So, square tiles is much more easier to uh, manage with. So, that is why people use usually square tiles. Otherwise, you can have hexagonal tiles like this. Okay? So, that is, so it is not a solid. 
Okay. So, the next possibility is obviously, we have come up to 360 degrees. So, we cannot think of going beyond 360. Okay. You cannot imagine 7 triangles meeting at a point, because then the angle will become more than 360. And it is impossible to have an angle at any point more than 360, isn't it? That is the maximum angle that we have. So, obviously, the there is no more solid that is feasible. Now, think of what is the next uh, polygon that we have? We have a square. Okay. Now, again imagine if there are two squares meeting at a point, it cannot become a solid. Okay. For a solid to have, there has to be at least three polygons meeting at a point. And so, you think of three squares meeting at a point and what would be the angle? 270 degrees and that is what solid is it? Cube, yes. We know it uh, from our childhood. It's that is the hexahedron, or cube. Huh? In a layman terms, it is cube. For a crystallographer, it's a hexahedron. Okay, so that's it. That is the one with where three squares meet at any corner. You take, uh, you can choose any corner. There are eight corners in a cube. Every corner you carefully observe, there are basically three squares meeting. This is true in all the regular solids, okay. though for example, octahedron I have shown you only at the apex, but you choose any other corner, at all other corners there will be four triangles meeting. Okay. So, this is the, the beauty of any regular solid. Then come to the next possibility, four squares meeting at a point, it becomes 360. So, it cannot be a solid, it becomes a tile. Okay. So, there is no solid where four uh, squares meet at a point. So, obviously, we have already come to 360. So, you cannot imagine another solid with that. So, the next possibility is only a pentagon. Pentagon, what is the internal angle? 72, 108. 108. This is square is 90. Okay. 72. Okay. So, 108. With 108, uh, imagine three, tri uh, three pentagons, regular pentagons meeting at a point, it becomes 324 and that is the dodecahedron and that is it, we have finished. we cannot have any more. If you can imagine four uh, pentagons meeting, it would cross 360. So, obviously, it is not feasible and you can see in such a simple terms, okay, he has proved. Uh, in fact, uh, um, Plato uh, uh, at his university, uh, I think you must have heard of the academy of, uh, uh, of Plato, okay, where he writes it on the front that anybody who does not know geometry should not enter into this uh, university. Okay. So, that is the kind of uh, fascination that he had uh, with geometry. Okay. So, this is the five platonic solids and even today okay, it is uh, impossible to prove any solid other than this. There are so many other uh, solids which are basically truncated versions of this. For example, uh, have you seen uh, football very carefully any time? You all play football. What are the faces in a football? Hexagons? For example, you think of putting hexagons together, you can never make a football. Because you imagine, uh, uh, let us come to that. Pentagon let us take. Now, take uh, the next one hexagon. Hexagon, how many, uh, what is the angle? hexagon the internal angle 120 degrees triangle is 60 not hexagon 120 degrees so imagine three hexagons meeting at a point minimum is 3 so three hexagons meeting at a point would give you 360 degrees so obviously it is not a solid it's a tile so it's a hexagonal tile or plane it becomes a plane so, if somebody wants to make a football with hexagons, he would never succeed. Okay? 
a football is not made up of hexagons. If you keep on putting hexagons together, okay, he cannot make a uh, football. Football is a solid, isn't it? It has to be rounded solid. Okay, you, you cannot uh, take a saucer kind of a football and play. We won't call it as a football then. Okay, it would become like a saucer. Okay. Huh? So what is that? Uh, uh, the football is made up of what uh, polygons? Everybody plays with food. Pentagons also not possible. It is a mixture of pentagons and hexagons. Go back today and have a look at any football. If you take only pentagons, I told you there is a frustration problem. You cannot tile only pentagons and make a solid. Okay? Imagine taking pentagons, regular pentagons. Uh, and putting them together and finally making a solid, it is impossible. Accepting uh, the uh, thing like uh, uh, dodecahedron, dodecahedron is the only solid and dodecahedron is not really you know spherical. For a football, you, if you think of dodecahedron being used, uh, I have it here, uh, but uh, at the moment I do not know whether you people can have a look. Maybe I will show it to you a little later. So, uh, if you think of using only dodecahedron uh, as a solid, it is not really a spherical ball. It will have all apexes uh, and uh, such a thing, if you use it, obviously it will hit somebody uh, and uh, will create problem. So, instead of that, what we need is a real spherical ball and for making such a spherical ball, okay, people had to use a combination of hexagons and uh, uh, pentagons. If you think of using a septagons and uh, uh, pentagons, that means seven sided so, uh, polygon and five sided polygon together, ultimately uh, it gets averaged out and it becomes like six, so it becomes like a plane. Okay? So, obviously people would not use a seven sided solid, uh, polygon and a five sided polygon. Okay? So, they use a combination of six sided polygon which is a hexagon and a five sided polygon which is a pentagon and that is how you get a uh, football and that is the structure of a C 60 basically. Okay? Bucky ball, bucky balls uh, is like a football basically. Okay? So, these are the five solids and in fact, uh, um, <coughs> uh, Plato has been so philosophical, he uh, said the whole universe, we talk, uh, think of five elements in the universe, is not it? Uh, the earth, uh, the air, the fire, all those uh, five elements. Okay? So, he thought these uh, five solids, uh, uh, the five elements in the universe are basically made of these five solids. Okay? So, <coughs> that was the kind of uh, philosophy he had, but slowly people have uh, <coughs> shown that even these five solids, excepting tetrahedron, octahedron and cube, and the remaining two do not come in most of the crystal structures. Okay? So, that brings us to the next step what is called a crystal structure. Okay? So, we know that though um, Plato has talked about these five solids, if you can imagine putting these five solids into a crystal uh, like for example, an aluminum. Okay? So, aluminum if you think of the atoms which are arranged in a three dimensions, they are arranged in what kind of a fashion? cubic FCC we call it, face centered cubic. Okay? So, basically it is a cubic type of arrangement of atoms, but there are <coughs> no arrangement of atoms which are like really icosahedral, dodecahedral that kind of an arrangement. The problem that comes is if you have that kind of an arrangement, you will have large amount of voids left out. Okay? To understand that, we need to understand what makes up the crystal structure. Basically, if you talk of crystal structure, there are two important points that one need to understand. What is called the symmetry of of a crystal structure. When I say cube, okay, how do you visualize the symmetry of a cube?
have you ever thought about what should be uh, how do you compare a cube with tetragonal a tetra uh, we have the cubic crystal system and tetragonal crystal system so how do we usually compare these two Angles are, are equal. That is for a cube, and for a tetragonal. Tetragonal. How do you define tetragonal? Cubic. Tetragonal. Very good. Where did you hear this? Very good. Very good. This is the. This is the actual definition of the two. Okay. We usually talk of A equal to B equal to C, alpha equal to beta equal to gamma equal to 90 degrees for cubic and uh, we talk about uh, uh, the A equal to B, but not equal to C for tetragonal and, uh, and the alpha, beta, gamma being equal to 90 degrees for a tetragonal system, but that is not the real definition of these two. The definition always comes from the symmetry of it. Okay. When we talk of symmetry, there are two kinds of symmetry in any material. Okay. You have to have two types of symmetries in any material, what is called rotational symmetry and a translational symmetry. Okay. In a crystal, if you have uh, only one of them, okay, we do not call it as a crystal. In fact, the definition of a crystal is that, that it should have both rotational symmetry and a translational symmetry. What is a rotational symmetry? Rotational symmetry means you take uh, any solid or any plane. For example, you take a square, take a square. A square has a fourfold symmetry, we say. Why it has a fourfold symmetry? I take a square, rotate the square al uh, around a particular axis. Let us say I take this square okay, and choose the center of it, okay, rotate it by 90 degrees. When I rotate it by 90 degrees, if you think of there are four corners, when I rotate this by 90 degrees, 1 goes to 2, okay, 2 goes to 3, 3 goes to 4 and 4 goes to 1, is not it? And this kind of a rotation does not create any new vertices or new points. Okay. So, that is the characteristic of the symmetry of the square. Instead of 90 degrees, if I rotate it by about 60 degrees, I will this 1 goes to some other point and 2 goes to some other point. So, I am generating new points. Okay. So, 60 degrees is not a characteristic rotation for a cube, whereas 90 degrees is a characteristic rotation for a cube, so that no new points are generated. So, the solid or the polygon merges into itself. Okay. You cannot differentiate between the original position and the new position and that is called the symmetry of that particular polygon or of that particular solid. Here we are talking of square as a polygon. So, so this 90 degree symmetry, if you put it in terms of what is called the, the rotational symmetry, the what is the order of the symmetry. So, we define it as n fold symmetry which is nothing but 360 degrees divided by the theta with which you rotate. For a cube, because it is 90 degrees rotation, then n is becomes equal to 4, because theta equal to 90 degrees for cube. So, we call that a square has a fourfold symmetry. What is the uh, uh, symmetry of a rectangle? It's a, it has a two-fold symmetry, it does not have a four-fold symmetry. So, it does not be that every four-sided polygon will have a four-fold symmetry, no. Okay. A rectangle will have a two-fold symmetry and if you take a triangle, it depends on which triangle. So, the moment I say triangle, you should not jump to a three-fold symmetry. Only equilateral triangle has a three-fold symmetry, not every triangle. Okay? Only equilateral triangle has a three-fold symmetry. Okay? And similarly, we can talk of a regular pentagon has a five-fold symmetry, 
okay uh, regular hexagon you watch my words regular hexagon i am saying regular pentagon you can have any pentagon okay with each side not being equal but such a pentagon will not have a five fold symmetry but a regular pentagon will have a five fold symmetry and similarly a regular hexagon will have a five fold symmetry we can uh, draw a uh, hexagon with not all six sides being equal so that will not have a six fold symmetry okay so like that we can talk of symmetry of a polygons what will be the symmetry of a circle can you please tell me it should be infinite a circle has an infinite symmetry okay so like that we can talk of symmetry of a polygon but as a, in a crystal structure we have a three dimensional arrangement of atoms isn't it so three dimensional arrangement of atoms means i am not concerned only about one point when i am talking of rotational symmetry the various rotational symmetries for example two fold symmetry three fold symmetry four fold symmetry five fold symmetry six fold symmetry and so on okay these are all concerned to one point okay i take in a square for example that centroid okay and then i am rotating around that point so that's why these are called point group symmetries rotational symmetries are called point group symmetries that means everything happens around a point so that means in a crystal structure you are talking of one particular point where how the atoms are arranged but that is only a localized arrangement at that point okay for example we call we talk about short range order okay so something like a short range order you are talking about right, in a small region okay but how is that translated in the three dimensions x y z and that is what gives us the crystal structure so that is what brings us translational symmetry so what is the definition of a translational symmetry translational symmetry basically means that if i take any two points or two atoms okay i don't usually call atoms basically because okay a crystal structure need not have one atom at each corner okay it depends on what kind of a, uh, um, uh, material we are talking about if we are talking of pure metals we know that at each corner you have one atom for example aluminum if i take face centered cubic i know that at each corner i have one atom of aluminum but if i talk of h2o simple structure that we know okay what is the crystal structure of h2o anybody knows hexagonal structure yes there are people who have gone to uh, 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 the clouds uh, and uh, try to put seeds in the in the clouds to get ice crystals to understand what is the structure of an ice crystal structure of an ice okay there was a lot of work on that okay to understand because otherwise the the way people have found out the crystal structure of a water you, uh, you know how is that the ice crystals that fall okay the snow that falls people try to look at the uh, the morphology of that snow crystals and usually we know to some extent the external morphology reflects the internal crystal structure so most of these ice crystals grow in uh, in six kind of directions okay so in a six fold kind of uh, pattern so from that people thought probably it should be hexagonal okay we will come to it a little later that just because anything has a six fold symmetry it does not mean it is a hexagonal system okay we will come to it a little later so here if you take a, a talk in terms of a translational symmetry then you take any two points take what is the distance between those two let's say a and if you trans traverse travel by the same distance a you should find another point in the same direction okay that's why in crystal uh, structure we talk of lattice points okay i'm sorry we talked about water but missed the actual point uh, the point is that that in water the hexagonal crystal structure we talk about at each corner you have three atoms not one atom what is that the molecule of h2o two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen so that molecule exists at each corner in water hydrogen does not exist separately and water does not exist separately they all always exist as one molecule okay that's why in thermodynamics when we talk of uh, the number of components okay 
when we say water it is only one component we do not take it as hydrogen and water the Gibbs phase rule you all remember that the p plus f equal to c plus 2 or c plus 1 depending on whether it is condensed phase rule or so. So, there the number of components when you are choosing if you are cho uh, talking about water okay, we will always take it as one component not as two components. Okay. So, that is very crucial. So, that it always exists as H 2 O. So, similarly a number of compounds are there are some uh, compounds where at each corner there are more than 100 atoms are present. Okay. So, I cannot say uh, that a crystal structure is regular arrangement of uh, uh, atoms at each corner I should not say. So, that is why we always call it as lattice points three dimensional regular arrangement of or three dimensional periodic arrangement of lattice points is what is a crystal structure and at each lattice point what you put depends on the type of material same face centered cubic structure. Okay, in one material may have only one atom and in some other material may have more than one atom depends on what material we are talking about. If it is pure metals usually it is one atom. Okay. So, that is the actual uh, structure definition of a crystal structure and if we come to this translational symmetry then basically that if you see the distance between any two lattice points I do not say atoms any two lattice points it should be the same in one direction wherever you go in the material and that is the translational symmetry. And if a material possesses both the rotational symmetry and a translational symmetry we call it as a crystal. If it does not possess both we call it as a huh? if it does not possess both amorphous we call it as an amorphous which does not have any structure. A quasi crystal is something which is in a midway it has a rotational symmetry and does not have a translational symmetry because it has a special rotational symmetry that is a five fold symmetry which in crystallography we call it as a forbidden symmetry. Why we call it as a forbidden symmetry because if you have a five fold you cannot have a translational symmetry go back to uh, Kittel you know the book of Kittel solid state physics at least all the physicists should know. Okay. So, if you see Kittel he shows a proof of why a 5 fold symmetry cannot have a translation symmetry attached to it. The simple way to prove it is take any points two points let the distance between them is let us say a and now rotate this point with respect to this point let us say point 1, point 2 rotate point 1 with respect to point 2 in a 5 fold rotation. If you rotate by 5 fold rotation means 108 degrees. So, I rotate it by 108 degrees I come to another point somewhere here I rotate this okay, that means this has been rotated and you brought it to somewhere here and similarly rotate number 2 with respect to number 1 you come to another point somewhere here. Okay. So, this is I can call it as 1 dash and this is I can call it as 2 dash and now if you think of this direction and the distance between 1 dash and 2 dash if the distance between 1 dash and 2 dash is not integral multiples of this distance a then it is not a crystal structure. Okay. It, it does not have a translation symmetry. If it has a if this a dash if a dash is integral multiples of a then only a crystal uh, that particular structure we can say has a translation symmetry otherwise it is not translation symmetry. Okay. If you take <coughs> a three fold or a four fold you will always see that a dash is always integral multiples of a. Think of a three fold for example, three fold is 60 degrees when you take the th this rotate by 60 degrees you come to a point. So, you come to a situation like this. Okay. So, where this distance is basically 0 times a okay. 
and if you take uh, 90 degrees, so this goes to here and this goes to here. So, again you make something like a square. So, this a dash will be 1 time of a, okay, a dash is equal to a. Okay. Similarly, if you take as a hexagonal 120 degrees, okay, you rotate it by 120 degrees, you will see basically that will again be integral multiples, but only with 5 fold you have problem, 5 fold, 7 fold, 8 fold. These are some of these uh, rotational symmetries which cannot have this kind of a translation symmetry. Okay. So, that is why we people have always thought that a crystal should not have a 5 fold symmetry unless uh, I mean until 1984 when <coughs> a person by name Shetman. in 1984 in a aluminum manganese alloy, aluminum 14 percent manganese. He made this alloy, rapidly solidified this and then looked at this uh, the ribbon that you get in a uh, in rapid solidification in a TEM and he found that this shows an interesting symmetry. Okay. The diffraction pattern looked like this. It has a transmitted spot and it has 10 spots around it, 4 plus 4 plus, yes, it has 10 spots around it. It is like a 10 fold symmetry. All, all spots are equally spaced. Okay. That means, if you think of the angle between uh, these two spots, what they make with the transmitted beam, okay, that angle is 36 degrees, which is same for all of them. So, the diffraction pattern looked really strange, okay, which has never been observed in any material till then. Okay. So, th he thought he has come up with a new type of material, uh, which shows entirely a new type of a diffraction pattern. And since then, uh, people have worked on a number of materials and now it is feasible to obtain such uh, diffraction patterns in so many varieties of materials okay? and these materials are called uh, quasi crystals now. And that is why the definition of a uh, crystal has been now changed. Okay? People do not say that uh, earlier the definition is that a crystal should have both translational symmetry and a uh, trans, uh, rotational symmetry. Now, that definition people do not uh, take it anymore. They say anything that gives you a sharp diffraction peak okay, or sharp diffraction pattern okay, is a crystal. So, that quasi crystals also can come into those in that particular class. Amorphous materials if you uh, do x-ray diffraction or electron diffraction, amorphous materials will never give a sharp diffraction pattern. They give you a broad peak, is not it? Okay. X-ray diffraction pattern of any amorphous space, if you see, it is just a broad peak. It will never give you sharp. The moment there is sharp peaks means each peak coming from some particular HKL plane, is not it? In X-ray diffraction, you all know, uh, each peak comes from a particular HKL plane and that means that particular uh, uh, plane basically indicates that there is a regular arrangement of atoms. In a quasi crystal also, there is a regular arrangement of atom. Only thing is there, it is not periodic, it is quasi periodic. We will talk to about it when we come to quasi crystals a little later, uh, that what is this quasi periodic arrangement of atoms, we will come to it a little later. Uh, yes. If at all the material has to exhibit a uh, symmetry, hmm. in this particular fashion, it, it, can, it can exhibit four fold symmetry uh, without uh, going like this. No, it's simple. If you think, so if you think of uh, take two points, and if you take point one, point two, rotate point one with respect to point two, ninety degrees. How do you rotate? Okay, the only way the point one comes here, one dash. There is no other place it can go. Either it goes this side or it goes this side. If it, it has to exhibit then five four, then it will exhibit a kind of pentagon system. Correct. But if you take that pentagon, that means a, a solid like this, this is the pentagon okay, with another point somewhere here joining. Okay. Let us not worry about that point now. Okay. Now, think of what is this distance. This distance can never be integral multiples of this, can never be. 
okay? and that is why we say it is cannot have trans because you see you think of this direction this is one direction atomic direction in a uh, in a crystal structure this is also another parallel atomic direction is not it in a three dimension. So, what should be the difference between these two? You see, a crystal structure is something what we imagine. Okay? The atomic arrangement in a material, it does not know what is its crystal structure. Okay? It has only regular arrangement of atoms, that is it. We are trying to join these atoms uh, by some lines and imagining some kind of a crystal structure. Okay? It does not join, uh, all these atoms are not joined by lines in any crystal structure. No, we are joining them. Okay. So, in principle, if there is one way of arrangement of atoms in one direction, a parallel direction in the in the space should have exactly similar arrangement. Okay. If the spacing between two atoms is A, the spacing between here also should be A, A. it cannot be less than A or it cannot be more than A, that is the problem. Okay. So, because of it, this cannot be compatible with translational symmetry. Okay. So, that is why we say a pentagon is a forbidden symmetry okay? and now people have started using this forbidden symmetry in crystal systems. Okay? So, this is as far as the crystal structure is concerned that symmetry is very crucial okay? that we should have uh, a symmetry which is both rotational and translational symmetry. And if we talk of rotational symmetry alone okay, and try to see how the seven crystal systems can be divided. In, in terms of this rotational symmetry, we can see that basically we can characterize take a cubic structure, which is the first crystal system that you all know. A cubic structure, okay, what should be the characteristic of a cubic structure in terms of the symmetry? Tell me, he Subodas has told earlier. It should have a fourfold symmetry. Of course, it has a fourfold symmetry, but it is not just fourfold symmetry. Three fourfold symmetries. That is the uh, beauty of a cube. You imagine a cube, okay? A axis, A, B, C. Imagine the three A axis. For example, I take a cube, draw a cube. Okay. You have a, this is one axis, this is another axis, this is another axis, x, y, z or a, b, c whatever you want to call it. Okay. We will try to repeat it for them a little later. Okay. So, this is uh, the three and all the three axes have a fourfold symmetry. Okay. All the three of them have a fourfold symmetry and that is is the characteristic of a cube. Okay? And if you take a tetragonal system, how do you, can you think of generating a tetragonal system from a cube? How do you uh, make a cube into a tetragonal, tetragon? No, no, not like that. I give you a cube. Can you make it into a tetragon? I ask you to make it into a tetragon. Physically, how do you make it? Simply take the cube and pull it along the uh, C axis or A or B axis, any one of the three axis. Either pull it or compress it. Okay? you make basically uh, that uh, if you think of pulling it. Okay, so, C axis bec uh, becomes longer, A and B will remain the same. So, A equal to B, but not equal to C that becomes a tetragonal system. Okay? And imagine in a tetragonal system, how many uh, four folds will be there in a tetragonal? There will be only one that is a basal plane, that is a base which is a square now. The all four sides okay, are no more squares, they are rectangles now. The moment you have pulled it uh, along the C axis, okay, you made it uh, a long uh, uh, elongated uh, cube kind of thing, it is no more a cube now. Uh. So, once it has become like that, okay, so you have lost 
two fourfold axis by just pulling a cube, giving a tension to a cube. Okay? So, you have only one fourfold axis which is at the bottom or at the top. Basically, it is the same axis. So, we do not differentiate between the axis going from bottom and the axis going from the top. So, it is one fourfold axis. So, uh, the basic difference between uh, a cubic structure and a tetragonal structure is that in a cubic structure you have three fourfold axis and in a tetragonal uh, structure you have only one fourfold axis. In addition to four, uh, three fourfold axis, uh, the cube also has a threefold axis. Can you imagine where is this threefold axis situated? Diagonals. Imagine all the diagonals. How many diagonals you have? Four diagonals. Okay. So here you see. Imagine uh, an axis going from this corner to this corner. This diagonal axis. I will use maybe a different color for you. So imagine this diagonal, or imagine from this point to this point, a diagonal going like this. Okay, that diagonal will be uh, having a, a threefold symmetry. For example, you imagine that's a plane. Okay, what is that plane? One one one, one, one plane. Well, there is a name given to that one 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 plane. Do you people know? What is that name given to that plane? In metallurgy, we always talk about it. It's the closest packed plane in FCC. FCC yes, it's the closest packed plane, and it's the slip plane in FCC. Why do we need to uh, study all these uh, crystal structures? It's basically because the deformation behavior of a material depends on this. Okay, the so the number of slip systems are crucial, which define the uh, deformability of a material. And we know that FCC is the closest packed and the largest number of slip systems it has. So, that is why it is easily deformable okay. and then comes the BCC and the HCP and so on and so forth. Okay. That is why the symmetry is very crucial okay. because FCC has the highest symmetry that is why we say it is easily deformable. Okay. So, if you try to take this, this particular plane is called octahedral plane. Okay. The reason why we call it octahedral plane is because there are 8 such planes 1 1 1. If you can think of what are the possible combinations of 1 1 1 bar 1 1 1 bar 1 bar 1 bar 1 okay. 1 bar 1 1 like that if you can try to think of what are the possible combinations you will see 8 such combinations possible. So, it is 8 uh, octahedral planes in a tetragonal. Okay. Let me draw that tetragonal for you. Imagine this is a tetragonal crystal structure or tetragonal unit cell. Okay. Take the 1 1 1 plane in here. What kind of a triangle is this? It is an isosceles triangle. It is not an equilateral triangle anymore. The moment it is an isosceles triangle, it cannot have a threefold symmetry. Yes. So, we can see clearly all the 1 1 1. Okay, okay. We will stop. <laughs>